pleased to bring in from the Manitoba capital, Sarah Orleski. And uh, I got to tell you, Sarah, biggest you were the biggest news in the NHL until Nazem Kadri. You're still the biggest news in the <laughs> CFL this week that you're moving to the Winnipeg Jets. Matt, how's the week been for you, Sarah, with the big news? Girl, uh, it's been absolutely overwhelming. And wouldn't you know, I'm not even in Winnipeg at the moment. I'm actually in Regina uh, for tonight's game Should've between known. the Lions and Riders. Mm-hmm. So looking forward to that one. I cannot wait. Uh, for this rematch for it. But this week, Rod, has just been um, incredibly overwhelming for it. I've sent through repeatedly to people apologizing for how long it's taken me to reply to to their messages to me. But it's just, it's been overwhelming. It's been so kind and supportive, and whether that be from um, colleagues, people in the industry, or fans. And as many fans, I mean, you mentioned, obviously, my connection uh, with CFL on TSN and so many CFL fans that have said that they're, well, they're very disappointed, leaving very happy and excited for me. So the response has been just beyond anything I could have imagined. Well, you can certainly put me in that group, but uh, I've, obviously I've been fan of yours for a long time. We go back a long ways as both score alum. And I watch all these games and uh, the CFL on TSN promoting 25 seasons of Friday Night Football. How many of those 25 have you been a part of 14 for them mm. so yeah it's been it has been uh, it's been quite the run with them and that was actually when i first came on at tsn in january of 2008 that was um that was why i was brought on was i was i mean based in toronto but i was on to be the sideline reporter for friday night football and what a tremendous um, crew we had at the time with chris cuthbert and glenn Suter, and uh it was just beyond anything that i could have imagined and i mean the people that we have working on the cfl broadcasts it's not only the a plus broadcasters but then also just a plus people that have a passion for the league so it's been just it's been one of the highlights of my career to have been a part of easily Oh, absolutely. And just such a huge, like a cornerstone of it, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, if you don't mind, I'll sprinkle some of the viewers' comments in here. Andrew Stout watching says, Bonjour, Rod. Bonjour, Sarah. I wanted to wish Sarah all the best. You always showed empathy and leadership on the sidelines. Mm-hmm. I am a huge fan of yours. I only wish I got to meet you. Merci pour tout, Sarah. <laughs> That's from Andrew. He's uh, Francais, as you know. I will say this, Sarah. You and I have had this discussion. I think your job as the sideline reporter, and trust me, I've done them all. I've done them all. As of you, I think. It's the hardest. It's the hardest. People might think it's easy. You made it look easy. It ain't easy being down there. Um, no, it isn't. Um, you know, and obviously there's, um, you know, people have different perceptions of sideline reporters um, depending on the lead, depending on the role. Uh, but I've obviously um, felt that, there's, that there is a, a lot of value to the role and and what you can add, not only of being eyes down there, but um, the opportunity to, especially with some of the interviews, whether it be, you know, not not every interview, not every halftime interview or post-game interview, it's going to be one of those ones that um, are incredibly memorable. But every time <laughs> that you get one of those ones where you see the raw emotion um, and you get some incredible answers and some that are just so funny. I wish I could remember who it was just the other uh, couple of weeks ago that had had their, or this season that, it, you know, it was their first touchdown. And it was, um, I said, so who's going to get the, you know, who's going to get the ball for it? Like me. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Kind of <laughs> usually you're, you're waiting for, you know, it to be mom or something like that. And then reconsidered. And he was like, ah, well, he's like, I might give it to my mom for a week too, depending on if she makes me cookies. And you just, I mean, some That's are what he super said, maybe two weeks, ones. right. <laughs> <laughs> That's <Yeah>. right. <laughs> so I said, so I was I mean, watching some are super yeah. light. Some are super lighthearted and some, I, I mean, I just recency bias last week, Brian Burnham talking after their huge win in Calgary and the emotion that he had um, over the win and his role in it and just what they were able to do. It just, it's such a privilege to be able to, um, to be able to have those moments with athletes and to be able to talk to them, the players beforehand and sometimes be able to convey some, some pretty great stories. So yeah, it's just, it's, it's a role that I've absolutely loved and treasured. 
Well, and looking forward, and you'll be telling these CFL stories forever, obviously, because of your legacy, but looking forward to the Jets, I wasn't really surprised by the move because I was in Winnipeg last summer, and I know what not just the people of Winnipeg think of you, but I know what the Jets think of you, and it's in very mm-hmm. high regard. So when I heard this, I'm like, yeah, that doesn't really surprise me, but I don't really know what you're going to be doing. So what are you going to be doing with the Winnipeg Jets? So the official title is senior host um, and producer, and the role is going to continue to evolve and will continue to expand the sorts of content um, that I'm involved in and and what we as a content team put out. But the emphasis for me, especially in the early goings, is going to be on providing uh, more access and better glimpses into um, getting to know the players for it. Something that um, I have always said that you know, and I mean, Rod, you know this, anyone watching knows this, fans want to know more about the players, more even with every passing day, I feel like there's this insatiable appetite for people, whatever team it is that you're following, they want to see behind the scenes. They want to get to know the players more. It isn't just about the X's and O's. And so this will give, an opportunity to be able to delve into a little bit more about guys away from the ice so that um, fans are able to learn more about their favorite players. And then also um, we're going to revamp a post game show and build out um, a post game show for Jets fans to be able to have. Cause right now, as soon as the games end, it goes to sports center and there's a, you know, you see the highlights and you see the recap, but there isn't really right after the game, there isn't that opportunity to, um, follow a true post game show. And that's what I'm going to host and help build out and produce for it. So hopefully it becomes something where fans, you know, as soon as that game is over, get into that habit of coming to the Jets channels to be able to uh, not only see the post game scrums and availabilities, but get some analysis on the game. And I said, kind of um, host a host a true post game show is what looking at and then we'll just continue to build from there well what's exciting about that is forging your own path very similar to what we're doing nobody can tell us what to do because mm-hmm. nobody's done it it's so exciting <laughs> you know when you say that about the players i've loved being in edmonton we were with some oiler people the other night and i said well Connor mcdavid must not be able to leave his condo in this town they're like no he takes his dog to the dog park and you know, he's a he's an Edmontonian, he, you know, and I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. People would like to see that. And that's the kind of stuff with the Jets. You know, people just, they don't even know that they're human, right, Sarah? They just see him on TV and they don't realize they're people. So that, that'll be fun yeah. to do, I would think. You must be looking forward to that. Very much so. That's what I love doing. I mean, whether it was with CFL or um, years covering the NHL for it, the, there are so many different places to and everyone always talks is talks about the x's and o's but it's it is getting to know more about the players and that's something that i feel that um in the 11 years that the jets have been in winnipeg that we don't have a great idea about these players beyond just what we see and it's become even more challenging in recent years obviously because of covid and not allowed you weren't allowed in the room and that just the opportunity hasn't been there. And I think that there are a lot of great stories. And some of these uh, players that, you know, some of their interests are really, you talk to them um, on the side and you find out that they have some really intriguing interests or they have these wicked senses, sense of humor is that you don't have the opportunity necessarily to have seen. So the hope is, is that um, we'll be able to extract that a little bit more from them. And, and so learn a little bit more about it and create you know, even more of a connection between fans and the players. You know, these interviews with you are always so easy. It's because you're a broadcaster, and, and Rich in Edmonton here says, if A.J. Jakubek, the illustrious voice of the Red Blacks, calls Sarah one of the best in the business, then I believe it. No. Well, you can't take my word for it. I've often said to any young reporter, whether it be female or otherwise, but especially females, it's like, look at Sarah and do that. That would be the template of to have success is to follow her career. And I watch all the Jets games, too, because I live in the Bermuda Triangle of the NHL. So we get all the games. And during COVID, Sarah, so when you lucky. were at your set, yeah, I very much. And I realize that. But you have those guys on like Poulin and Ferraro from their home. And you're at the rink. And the Jets are on the road. And calls are dropping out. And blah, 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 blah. And you're tap dancing on the air. I'm like, that's a broadcaster. Because I've been there. Was that was that stressful? That that COVID that couldn't have been fun in your role. 
No, I mean, the one thing that I will say is that it was what I what I did enjoy about it and appreciated was just that we were able to incorporate um, some of the terrific stable of analysts that TSN has. And it being it's a, you mentioned Ray Ferraro and we would be, uh, I mean, he's such a great storyteller. And so he's always fun to have on, but there was a commercial breaker in and they said, okay, well, we're having problems with Ray. And I tried talking to Ray. He couldn't hear me. And so you know, you're sitting there and there's nobody in the arena other than us. And I'm starting to sweat because I'm thinking, oh, I don't know what, what are we going to do right now with it? So there's certainly, there's some challenges as you can uh, certainly appreciate when doing um, interviews or doing uh, or having the conversations virtually. So it makes for a, a challenge sometimes, but I just think that it also was able to, um, we were also able to incorporate or had to be more creative and incorporate people in other ways. So it was great, but there was certainly, there were some stressful moments of thinking if this, if this goes south and all of a sudden we don't hear Ray or we lose, you know, Pooley or Darren Drager or, or whoever, what exactly are we going to do? <laughs> so it, uh, like I said, it, it, it led to a few times where I'd be sitting there wanting to fan myself, go, just breathe, just breathe, Sarah, this is going to be okay. Uh, well, can I just say if there was one person out there watching, it was me knowing what you were going through and you pulled it off tremendously. And I'll just say, lastly, this, um, there, you know, there becomes a time you got to turn the page, right? Uh, go to the next chapter. That's where you're at. That's where I'm at. And I, I don't know if Britt Dort is going to be the next Sarah Orlowski. Maybe you know more than me, but I've known that family. I know he played for the, her brother, Jeff played for the Notre Dame hounds and the Pats. And they're all so excited with Britt. She's paid her dues. She's worked her way up and she's a great girl. Um, if she does, take over for you that's that's pretty exciting for her and you because she's she's a great kid she you know what i've had the opportunity um to get to know her a little bit she in shadowing me for a number of the games here and she's just she's so um i mean she's so nice and that's always one of the things that strikes me you know kind of first and foremost with people that i think um sometimes doesn't get appreciated enough is how important uh, it is to be, uh, well, I mean, to be kind and to treat everybody on your cruise really well. And, and she, and she's certainly delightful like that and asked a ton of questions. And I know that whatever it is going forward, that certainly with, um, her personality and her incredibly hard work, cause that's never easy. The role that she does, um, right now in her day job, um, that's never because you're doing everything. So the hard work is, the hard work is certainly there. And I've just, it's been so nice to be able to get to know her over this past, I guess, month and a half. Yep. Uh, she's going to be great. But as I say, time marches on. Uh, lastly, BW, one of our viewers in Edmonton says, I have more respect after hearing Sarah's story. All the best with Jets TV. And the cool thing is every BB will be able to watch uh, you through the Absolutely. Jets digital channel. So that's exciting too. Sarah, enjoy the game tonight. It's going to be awesome. You know, Mosaics, there's nowhere better on a hot summer night under the lights. Big game tonight. Uh, good luck. I'll be watching. Thanks so much. Always appreciate the support, Rod. And yeah, as you mentioned, I mean, big game tonight. If people are if people are in the area watching and don't have their tickets yet and haven't seen Nathan Rourke play in person, uh, this is a game that you're not going to want to miss because this is this is going to be a West that continues to heat up with the Riders and the Lions. Can you please call him West Jet on the air tonight? That's my nickname for him, and nobody's picked <laughs> up on it. Oh, is so it? if you can slip that in, yeah, yeah that would be great. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks, Rod. Sarah Orleski from the CFL on TSN. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching the RP Show on YouTube. And don't forget, we're live daily on YouTube from noon to 2 Eastern. If you like what you see, hit subscribe. And if you like the program, check around for other segments of the Rod Peterson Show here on YouTube.